This perpetual motion machine went viral, pretending to make free energy. However, the general idea behind it is actually much more useful than you might think. In fact, it powers some of the most advanced motor test labs in the world. And I know this because I've spent some time working with them. As crazy as it sounds, the underlying principles of this fake device are saving engineers millions of dollars every year. So buckle up and prepare for some satisfyingly efficient engineering. I'm Ryan Innes, and this is a Xerox Deep Dive. Perpetual motion free energy machines are everywhere on the internet right now, and although they're all fake, I actually have a bit of a soft spot for them. When I was a kid, I would dream up ways of making free energy perpetual motion machines, and it was a bit of a gateway into energy engineering for me. However, I was unfortunately hit with the laws of physics, which soon brought my dreams to an end. But that doesn't mean everything I learned about them was for nothing, and I'm going to show you why. I respect your time, so we'll get straight into how this works, or doesn't work, and how it's getting on impacting the real world of engineering. A simple type of perpetual motion machine requires a system to have no inefficiencies or losses. For example, a wheel could spin forever if, after an initial push, there was nothing acting on it to slow it down. But unfortunately, there is air resistance and friction in the bearings that eventually slow it down and prevent perpetual motion. So this has really good bearings on it. The bicycle demonstration is a kind of flywheel, and very smart people from places like NASA have spent large amounts of time and money to reduce the losses and keep flywheels spinning for as long as possible. This includes ultra low friction bearings and vacuums to minimize air resistance, but 100% efficiency in a closed system is still impossible, so it will eventually stop. Alternatively, you can have perpetual motion machines that claim to magically generate more energy than they're using and can therefore spin indefinitely. By claiming to generate more energy than they use, it appears that these perpetual motion machines can then be used to spin a generator and create free electricity. It would be like me trying to run a generator off of this bicycle wheel. Without an external energy source, it would quickly slow down. However, not all examples are as easy to recognize as fake. The one I showed at the start of this video plugs two electric machines into each other. One of the machines acts as a generator and the other as a motor. The idea is that by spinning up the generator, the electrical power it produces can be wired back into the motor. When the motor receives this power, it then spins. Through a pulley belt, this rotation can be fed back into the generator, which converts the mechanical power back into electricity, and the loop continues. The motor spins the generator, which powers the motor, which spins the generator, which powers the motor, in a never-ending loop. And to be honest, the worksmanship on some of these machines is actually pretty good. However, we know it can't be true. Because there are losses in the machine, which mainly show up as heat, energy is wasted each loop and the motors slow down. But what makes this free energy device much more convincing than the simple wheel example is that it's more complex and that there's a slice of truth in it. We can explore this slice of truth and see how engineers are saving millions each year by first doing a quick demonstration with these two DC electric motors. But first, a quick message from today's sponsor, 8sleep who are using engineering to improve sleep in an extremely efficient way. You've probably already heard of 8sleep by now, the company dedicated to improving your sleep. Well, they've just launched the new Pod 5, which is a smart mattress cover that goes directly onto your existing mattress. By automatically regulating your temperature at night, it helps you get up to a full hour of extra quality sleep each night, boosting your energy so you can do the things that you love. It also controls the temperature of each side independently in case you and your partner like different temperatures. The pod cleverly regulates your body's sleep cycles with the ability to cool down to just 55 degrees Fahrenheit or warm up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So instead of heating or cooling your entire house, you can just control the temperature of your bed, which is much more efficient. 
But it's not all just about temperature, as the built-in sensors monitor your sleep stages, heart rate variability, respiratory rate and more, meaning you can track your sleep without wearing any devices. This data ties into their preventative health tracking system, which can update you on things like disrupted breathing or abnormal heartbeats. Head over to 8sleep.com slash Xeroth and use the code Xeroth to get $350 off your very own Pod5 system. You also get 30 days to try it at home and then return it if you don't like it, though I'm sure you will and your body will thank you for the investment into good sleep. Okay, now back to these electric motors. What do you think will happen? I've connected them up and I'm gonna spin one of them around. If I spin motor one, then motor two starts spinning as well. And that's because motor one is acting as a generator, turning my mechanical input into electricity, which then flows into motor two, acting as a motor and starts to spin as well, though at a lower torque and speed. Now, if you imagine a mechanical link between motor one and two, you could imagine that me spinning motor one would cause electricity to flow to motor two, which would make it spin and then make motor one spin again, almost like some kind of perpetual motion machine. However, we know that this can't be true because energy is lost as it goes round the loop and it would slow down like the bicycle wheel. However, I want you to keep this idea in mind for the next part of the video. Now imagine another example where we want to understand the performance of an electric motor, in this case, motor one. What I can do is mechanically connect them together, for example, by the shaft, and then send electrical power to motor one. Motor two could then work against motor one acting as a generator, and we could measure how much speed and torque we're able to get out of motor one at different power inputs and measure its performance. We can also vary how much work motor one has to put in depending on how much resistance we put on motor two. This is the basic operation of a dynamometer, which are used to test the performance of electric motors. One electric machine is powered and tested and the other electric machine provides the load often simulating the requirements to drive a car or fly a plane. In older setups, the electricity generated by the generator would just be wasted, often as unnecessary heat. However, from what we saw in the free energy device, we know that not all that energy has to go to waste. In fact, it could be recirculated to power the motor that we're testing. Therefore, you only need to add in enough energy to cover the losses to keep the dynamometer spinning at a constant rate. Okay, so here is a quick example. Imagine that we had motor one and motor two, where motor one drew 100 watts of power from the power source. Using this power to drive motor one and then a pulley, we can imagine that due to some losses, about 90 watts of power makes it to the shaft of motor two. The electrical energy is converted to mechanical, and now motor two can act as a generator to turn this 90 watts of mechanical power back into electrical power, and assuming similar losses, we get 81 watts of power outputted. Now, instead of wasting this 81 watts, we can recirculate it into the system, and instead of drawing 100 watts from our power source, maybe the grid, we instead only have to draw 19 watts, which is the difference between the two. Now, of course, in reality, we need some power electronics to control this, but the principles are the same. In the real world, the motors and generators used are often three phase, so it becomes even more complicated. To account for this, there are a series of power electronics and energy storage systems to balance everything out. In this dynamometer system by Unico, they use these exact principles for E-axle testing. It's a similar setup, but they have one motor in the middle connected to an axle, which powers two generators, one on each side. The initial power input comes from a power supply, which spins up the E-axle motor. This spinning then causes the generators on each side to produce electrical power, which is recirculated around into the power electronics cabinet. From here, the regenerated power can be locally stored and recombined with incoming power, ready to be delivered to the motors again via the power supply. This is all also reminiscent of something called a Hopkinson's test, but that requires two identical machines in a bit of a simpler setup to measure their efficiency. Now, you might be thinking that this all sounds very smart, as it saves a considerable amount of electricity that would otherwise be wasted, therefore reducing their electricity bills. 
And you would be right, but just you wait because there are much bigger savings to be made by using this setup. See, one of the most expensive parts of building a test lab for electric motors is getting enough juice from the grid. The bigger the motors you test, the bigger the power connection you need, and that means massive transformers, heavy duty switchgear, and charges to reserve grid capacity. But with regenerative dynamometers, you don't actually need all of that extra power. Instead of sucking megawatts from the grid and wasting it as heat, the motors just trade energy back and forth, with only the little bit you lose as heat due to motor inefficiencies coming from the mains. This means you save a fortune on grid infrastructure as well as all of the electricity savings too, all without compromising your ability to thrash the motors at full power all day long. Who would have thought that this sketchy free energy device actually has some really interesting engineering worth looking into? If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It's free and helps the channel a lot. And also feel free to sign up to the newsletter that's starting soon. You might also like some of my other videos like this one on an electric version of a jet engine coming to a plane near you soon. And as always, thanks for watching.